What's up, guys? Welcome to another episode of Calcio e Basta with Dan, Gianni, myself, Luca. Uh, both Milan clubs dropping points in back-to-back weeks. Napoli finally taking advantage with the big win over Lazio today. Nothing else to say. Take it away, guys. Go ahead, Dan. You go first, John. I. <laughs> no, uh, I only got to see the first half and a bit of the second, so I can't really say much about Literally, when I left is when the game got good for us. So I can't really say too much about, you know, when it was good. But I can say plenty about when it was bad. And um, it, I don't know. I, Napoli lately have, have been in a really rough patch in terms of performances and, and everything. I mean, yeah, we got the win today, but, but something still needs to change regardless. Like, they have to come back down to earth real quick. Uh, to beat Milan next week because yeah. especially for like I want to say at least 60 minutes of that game we were kind of garbage not even kind of we were garbage yeah uh, Lazio were all over us I and, wish that um, I could give some kind of input but I mean I was like you know, I was watching the game here and there I was on a zoom call at the same time but I mean the last 10 minutes were like something else man like those are the games that win you guys titles those, those yeah are the exactly of games. like that that type of win right there is just like Dybala against uh, Lazio in 2018 and they're both at Lazio just, man and they were both at Lazio last seconds of the game yeah and and unfortunately that ended up being that was the day in my in, from what I remember that was the day where I was like yeah we're not winning this when yeah. Napoli was against Juve in the title race, like yeah, we're not winning the title race. Like they're they're gonna win, yeah. you know. To me, the the dream was over there, at right in that game. So I don't know. Maybe this has that same effect on Milan and Inter. You know what I mean? We'll see. Hopefully, Joel. well, it's a step it's a step in the right direction because like we've seen in the past that we have games after those teams, when and we don't we just melt. Like remember in twenty seventeen. 2018, when when Inter the Inter Juve game where Juve came back, yeah, and then afterwards, like just seeing them come back, probably just crushed us and we didn't play well. And this time it was different. Um, it gives me some flashbacks to when we beat Kievo very late at the at the San Paolo mm-hmm. at the time. But um, obviously that didn't lead us into a Scudetto winning year. So hopefully it's different. Um, but I I watched the whole game. So just to go off what you guys were saying, the first. Yeah, 55 minutes, 60 minutes were just complete garbage. Like, at the end of the first half, you look at the stats, and they're kind of misleading because we had the same amount of shots on target. We ended up having, like, 1% more possession, and it just didn't feel that way. Like, it was it was very bad. We were we were outplayed, and it was, you know, they should have had at least a goal. Uh, Ospina, again, was huge today. You know, a couple of big saves uh, that, you know, some people will say, oh, they're routine saves. But, listen, he made them. Uh, the Pedro goal, I – it was a, one of the best goals of the season. You know, it's going to be up there against Malinowski's goal. So, um, you know, I don't know how much he could have done. He did, I think, got a piece to, to it. I, I don't remember it exactly, but, you know, maybe. But regardless, he had a big game. And for me, after Insignia's goal, like, he literally unlocked himself. Then it, it, it's, like, incomparable what you saw after he scored his goal to anything else from this whole season. He, he's yeah. been that that bad like leading up to this point. And obviously we we know the whole thing, no open play goals. He gets one open play goal. He scores again, but it's offside. Then he, he's the assist to the game winner. So like unlock that one goal, just completely hit something for him that it maybe just took off a weight off his shoulders where he's like, all right, I gotta, this is it. Like then he felt like a captain in those last like 25 minutes. Like after his goal, he, he felt like that. He put it on his shoulders. It felt like, and then, even at the end to lay it off to Fabian and then Fabian, I mean, like Fabian was stinky the whole game. Yeah. And then that, like, that's all you need. And then he reminds you of why Real Madrid might want him. And, you he know, like that's what he did his job to them. Man. He, he, yeah, that, he did. Goal, he did. that goal, the technique on that goal is stupid. Like, I don't, I don't think I, you don't see many players with that technique. on Change everything. So I I'm glad, say, though, glad he, he's made me I do my work. I have to words. say, th- this is like completely random. Just you, you brought up, Zielinski, I love watching that guy play. I love watching Zielinski play. Yeah, he's awesome. he's such an elegant player, man. He's just the way his turns, his cuts, his decision making. There are about three plays during the game in the first half that 
you know how these games go. It, it, they go in waves. At one point, Napoli's putting so much pressure on Lazio building out of the back. Then Lazio will put pressure on Napoli building, building out of the back. And there were some moments that Koulibaly was misplacing passes, moments where Mario Rui just couldn't find the outlet to get out of there, especially building from like the bottom of the screen, moving from right to left. And there were plays that Zielinski was getting the ball. And I kept saying to myself, Raman is there. Raman is there to play across the field. It's easy to say that when you're watching it, when you're watching the screen, it's one thing to be on the field. He, the way he disguised certain passes and just did a little cut and turned his body, played the other way, sent Immobile, sent Luis Alberto, sent all those guys to have a coffee somewhere. Mm-hmm. The guy just, the way the guy disguises his, the way the guy disguises his decision-making, it's, it's. And that's something. saying something. Cause he had a bad game. It's something. Like that, yeah. that's him in a bad game. So when he's on, you know. Oh, when Zielinski's how... on, he's on, he's on. The guy left foot, yeah. left foot, right foot, decision-making, dribbling. He has everything. Speaking of schedules though, you know, you guys mentioned Milan is the next game in the past, for example, after Juve Inter. Napoli played Fiorentina, a game that they should have gone and got the three points from. I think it's good for you guys that you play against Milan next because you don't want it to be that you have this, you're coming off this big momentum, a win against Lazio away from home. Think about it. Just seeing the video of Politano gave me chills and I'm not even a Napoli fan because I've experienced that as a player too, playing whatever, playing in college, We've, we, we've won games where we go and we jump on the fence and we're screaming with our friends and the, and the fans. That feeling propels a team. I think that if you guys were to have a stretch of playing, I don't know, maybe Udinese, then Salernitana, Bologna, it's easy to go and complicate yourself in those games. Bringing this momentum to a team, to a game like Milan now, puts you guys in a good spot because whatever energy you have now, you're putting, you're throwing that into the game. Lazio was the most important game of the season for you guys today and the next game now Milan is going to be the next most important game of the season wrap it up with uh, your boy my boy your boy yeah the Lobotka, mechanic the, boy. Vodka. the mechanic if he wasn't playing soccer <laughs> no but you know how much I love him I always love him he's a great player he he um He's he's very important to this team, and I'm glad that he's finally like he finally found himself under Spalletti, um, and thank God he's back. It's a, it's a simple. Yeah. Like as he that. does so much more than that too. I, I can't remember the last time Fabian looked bad with Lobotka. Look, Fabian hasn't looked bad with Lobotka there. You know, Fabian's only that's looked bad with when them he, when he hasn't had uh, like someone there. Yeah, yeah. Well, guys, thanks for being here with us on Calcio Basta with uh, Gianni, Dan, and myself. Luca. Mm-hmm. Yep, we appreciate it, guys. Obviously, go appreciate follow us it. on our socials, uh, Twitter and TikTok, at Caltrabasta TM, on both of them. All right, so both of them are the same. On YouTube, just Caltrabasta. So find us there, and we'll keep on posting content every week, and hopefully we can get this thing going. Uh, but we appreciate it. Thank you. See you guys soon. Ciao. Ciao. Ciao.